eat that frog or make frog legs? Which is it? That's what we're talking about today. Hi, this is Frank Buck, and this is the place to be if you want to get organized and make it look easy. Mark Twain once said, if it's your job to eat a frog, it's best to do it first thing in the morning. And if it's your job to eat two frogs, it's best to eat the biggest one first. His point is that we all have tasks that are unpleasant or difficult. And rather than procrastinate, do it first and get it over with. The worst part of the day is over. You can look forward to more pleasurable activities planned for later in the day. Author Brian Tracy even wrote a book based on the concept. The book entitled Eat That Frog is even viewed as a time management system. And in a blog from the, uh, the Monday.com blog, a post from the Monday.com blog, the author and her partner in crime tried this method and logged the pros and cons. Spoiler alert, they gave up after two days. I've linked to that article in the body of the blog post that accompanies this episode. So what about frog legs instead? Have you ever eaten frog legs? Well, they're a common delicacy, especially in France. What if you could turn something that's unpleasant into something that's a delicacy? In the four-hour work week, Tim Ferriss poses the question, what would this look like if it were easy? What if we could take the difficult task and make it easy? What if we could turn eat that frog into enjoy frog legs? So why is the difficult thing difficult? When you've identified the frog, can you pinpoint what makes it so unpleasant? Is it, I don't have the right tools? Is it the tools don't work well? Is it, I don't really know where to start? Is it, I'm not good at it? Is it, it'll take too long? If you can answer that question, you're on your way to making the difficult things easy. Can you break down the task into smaller parts? As one example, let's take a look at what you're viewing right now. Each week, the piece of content that I bring you appears as text in a blog post, as a podcast, as a YouTube video, and as a newspaper column. There are many steps involved. Here are a few. Coming up with the idea, outlining the points I want to make, drafting the article, Recording, editing, and uploading the podcast. Recording, editing, and uploading the video. Embedding the podcast in the video into the blog post. Finding a suitable photo to serve as the thumbnail image for the video and the featured image for the blog. Putting that image into Canva, adding the title on top of it, downloading it, compressing the photo, uploading the photo to my website's library, adding it to the blog, uh, and adding it as a thumbnail for the YouTube. You, you see what I mean? The list just kind of goes on and on. Right this week's content is, without a doubt, a frog, a big frog. But what would it look like if it were easy? You just saw a list of the subtasks that go into producing one piece of content. Let's face it, going to a free site such as Pixabay and downloading a suitable picture of a frog to use in the featured image is just not that hard. If your frog is a frog because of all the number of steps involved, break it down and batch them. Batch similar items together. That way you can start to keep track of everything. I have a spreadsheet. I use it to plan. I have a row for every date of Tuesday extending far in the future because Tuesday is the day that I release the content. That spreadsheet provides a place to trap an idea for a post that might not be produced for months. No good ideas ever lost. And the columns list the steps involved in producing that content. I work a month ahead and batch the steps. I work on all four titles for the month coming up during one sitting. And when I look for a picture of a frog to use, 
I'm also looking for pictures for all of the posts coming up that month for the four or five weeks that are in that next month. Next, I open Canva, create a new blank project and add a place for the headline and add another place where I put the name of my website. I go ahead and type that in. And then before I do anything else, I just duplicate that three or four times, depending on how many weeks there are coming up in that next month. Um, the name of the website's already there now on every one of them. All I have to do is add the name of the post. I drag the images downloaded to my desktop to each of the frames, and in just a few seconds, I'm able to download the whole thing to my desktop. I like to compress the resulting images, so I drag the whole set into OptimaZilla. Let it compress all of them at once and download the results to my computer desktop. I'll need those featured images for the blog post, for YouTube thumbnails, and for my weekly email that I send to my list. So I drag the whole set into the website's media library at once, my constant contact image library at once, and a folder where I keep all blog images, featured images at once. The folder is sorted chronologically, so when it's time to upload all four or five of those YouTube videos in one sitting, I have all the thumbnails right there ready to upload. So do you see why batching is so important? If I had to go to Pixabay, and then Canva, and then OptimaZilla, and then my website, and then Constant Contact, well, you get the idea. It could get really old really quickly. By the way, if you're doing a similar type of repeating project that has a number of repeating steps, you may be interested in learning more about my content creation calendar. All of the information is in a post that I compose called How to Create a Robust Content Calendar. You'll find a link to it in the body of the blog post that accompanies this video. So let's talk about the tools and the know-how. Do you hate to eat that frog because you don't have the tools that would make it easy? Or maybe you're not sure what you're doing. For a long time, I resisted producing video like what you're watching right now because I simply didn't have a good strategy for making it easy. Once I figured out that I could just record a Zoom meeting with myself and simply hit the record button, the light bulb came on. I did a little research, found a free video editor, and searched YouTube for a couple of quick tutorials. And well, I was all set. And you can read about that experience in a post I wrote called How to Create Video with Zoom and Edit with Shotcut. The link is also in the body of the blog post. In today's world, when you're clear on what you want to learn, you've accomplished half the battle. Now, the next part of the battle is Planning tomorrow today, have you selected your fab five? And what I'm talking about there is the five most important things for the upcoming day. And are they worded so clearly that they're easy to do and that you're excited about how life is going to be better after they're done and you're excited about the possibilities for the day ahead? If not, you're not done planning. The literature on time management is filled with suggestions that you start the day with the important tasks, the tasks that are going to bring you closer to the goals you've established as being important to your success, either personally or professionally. My advice is exactly the same. On my digital task list, remember the milk, my list for today is divided into four sections, the Fab Five, morning, afternoon, and evening. So, what are your fab five for tomorrow? Get those identified and tomorrow is going to be a more productive day. But the question remains this, will you be looking at five frogs? Do you want to be looking at five frogs and eating five frogs? Or do you want to have that delicacy? Five pairs of tasty frog legs. You can't wait to dig in. What would this look like if it were easy? That's the question for each of us. Thanks for stopping by. And if you enjoyed this video, take a look at these two videos right over here and consider subscribing to the channel. This has been Frank Buck, helping you get organized, 
and make it look easy.